everyone thank you for joining me today my name is Agiola you are welcome back to my channel here at Ola Books International all we do is talk about books we talk about writing we talk about reading we talk about stories we discuss themes from the book we discuss many things just like right now I was looking at the beginning of the chapter that I am going to read to you today I was looking at the picture I was looking at the title and I was looking at how apt both of them are exactly for this chapter and a shout out goes to my nephew i mean Adeyemi, who helped me with the pictures in this book colors of love the lord bless you wherever you are today you did a very good job a fantastic job with the pictures in this book so today i just wanted to um, bring our attention back to books it is not only about the stories we read it is about the settings what area what are we talking about? What is going on in this scene? In what country is the story coming from? Who are the people in the story? Why are they doing what they are doing? You know, what is their culture? We're talking about the settings of the book. Is it set in the US? Is it set in Nigeria? Is it set in Africa? Is it set in Asia? Where is the setting of a book? You can learn from that. You, you, you broaden your horizon when you read. You, you, you see the settings. You see the things. Just like I bring up some of the things from this book every week. Also, we can talk about illustrations. Oh, I love that picture. You know, pictures represent stories. Picture represents individuals. These are some of the things we see in the books. And of course, writing as well. When you read certain kinds of book and you have the gift of writing or you go to school for writing, you will be able to write along that line. There are so many things that jumps at us when we walk around in the street, going out somewhere, going to work, doing our daily jobs. There are many things we see. And as uh, an author, as an illustrator, as you know, whatever you do, you are able to include what you see you are able to include what inspires you into what you do i know you're a bookworm if you are constantly coming back to this channel thank you so much i have also included the link to which you can buy the book if you're really interested in buying the book or you can just stay with me as we read the story as i read the story and of course i have links to previous videos in the description below so that you can understand the book right from the start we are reading chapter 10 today so you need to listen to chapter 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 if you are watching this video for the first time today the link is right there in the description there is a playlist titled colors of love all our books readers reviews all right watch the videos and leave me a comment i want to know what you think about the videos all right i've been talking too much let's go right into reading chapter 10 the double game so there was a consumer product operations manager working for bustling whole foods in houston texas the company had been doing extremely well since he joined the administrative team his immediate supervisor, the owner of the company, had entrusted the success of the new company in New York to him. He was supposed to be gone for three days. He had left on a Tuesday and was supposed to be back Thursday night or Friday morning and have the rest of the day off. But he had told his wife he wouldn't be back till Friday night and had to change the story on Sunday night. He hoped she didn't doubt him. He thought it was a coincidence that his job now required him to be in New York every month for the next few months or until the new company over there was doing well enough to be left alone. He thought this would be an excellent opportunity for him to spend some days with Susan. Just as he was concluding in his mind to always stop by at Susan's each time he had to go to New York, he thought about someone who knew his wife spotting him and snitching on him. Carrie's sister-in-law lived not far away from Susan's place. Carrie was probably visiting her when she stopped at the store where she saw Susan. He was sure that was the case. The distance of a little over an hour's drive was too much for his wife to make just because she wanted groceries. Only a few minutes from where they resided. 
Several grocery stores were her favorite spots for fresh fruits. He would wait to hear the story she had to tell about meeting Susan at the store. He prepared himself for a perfect act. He wasn't trying to lose Carrie and he wasn't letting go of Susan either. He just had to be smart. Speaking of being smart, he had to think of moving Susan farther away from Carrie. That shouldn't be a problem for him since he had rented the apartment for her and was still responsible for paying the rent. He would talk to her about it the next time he visited. Then he thought about why he didn't marry Susan in the first place. Why did he decide to let go of her to marry another woman? Another woman? Did he just refer to his legally married wife as another woman? Something was wrong with him, but he couldn't place what it was. Can anybody place what it is that is wrong with Tosi? Mm. His mind went back to how he had met Susan. It was on a rainy day. He was driving home from work and it was getting dark. He slowed down as the green light turned yellow and he came to a complete stop just as the light turned red. He remembered he had seen an adult in a movie play the red light stop and green light go game with a group of students. He smiled as the adult delightful smile came back to his memory. One day he would have children of his own. He would marry a beautiful African lady and have up to six children. He smiled again at the thought of it. Just before the lights turned green, he noticed the lovely lady trying to cover herself with a scarf to avoid getting wet. He shook his head with regret. That definitely would be one of my people. Didn't she see the weather forecast? He asked no one in particular. Rain was in the forecast for that day. And anyone stepping outdoors should be prepared for the storm by having an umbrella with them. The lights on green and he drove ahead, pulling over to the right lane until he stopped in front of the lady getting wet. He rolled down the side window and said, hello, sweetie. She walked away from him. He drove closer to her. It's obvious you need a ride. You may hop it and I'll drop you home. Susan looked at him like she was having second thoughts. I don't bite people, just trying to help. Where are you going? Hillcrest Road, she said with a straight face. Hopping, he said, with a little reluctance, Susan did. Thank you, she said without leaving a hint in her attitude or tone or voice that she meant it. Susan headed toward Hillcrest Road and they were silent for a few minutes until he broke the silence by asking her where she was from. She told him she was from Imo State in Nigeria and he was happy she was from Nigeria because that was where he was from. But he was from Oyo State. That was the beginning of a chat that lasted for the 15 minute drive. When he eventually pulled up in front of her apartment building, they were talking and laughing like old friends. Only then did he ask for her name and phone number. She knew she would love to see him again, so she agreed to a lunch date with him for the next day. He reached in the back seat of his car and offered her an umbrella. Rain is in the forecast all week. You will need an umbrella. She looked at the quizzical look on his face and burst out laughing. Really? I had an umbrella today. I gave it to an elderly co-worker of mine whose car broke down and couldn't drive home. I always have one. That was nice of you, but now you do not have one. You can have mine, he said, insisting she take the umbrella. I don't need it. I have another one in my room. Thank you. She got out of his car, closed the door, and walked away sweetly. See you tomorrow, he yelled out behind her. She turned around and waved at him. I hope she shows up, he said to himself. I like her. So, I will stop reading right here and I will complete reading chapter 10 next week. Now, we know the story of how Tosin and Susan met. 
actually the story is not over yet it's a flashback we'll finish reading the flashback next week if you want to know who Tosin is if you want to know who Susan is if you want to know how we arrived at this stage check on the description below and you will find links to previous readings of this book or links to where you can buy the book so I want to talk about being nice being there for other people you know just giving out an umbrella Susan gave out her umbrella to an elderly lady who needed it and she was walking in the rain and of course she got a ride you know getting a ride to me is better than just having an umbrella because even with the umbrella she might have to wait in the rain for longer hours before she will catch the bus or she may have to wait for uber or something i don't know what was going on with her walking in the rain she ended up in the rain and you know we have many immigrants there are so many challenges we face depending on what your status is so if you're an, an immigrant and you're facing challenges whatever challenge it is you're facing i am a christian and i believe so much in prayers and i believe so much that god hears prayers i believe whatever situation you find yourself in you can talk to god and it will help you out of your situation you know have an umbrella definitely you may get it right without saying too much i want to sign out today i hope and i believe i've been able to say one or two things to you remember be nice to your neighbors remember be kind remember to give without thinking of getting anything back from that person it pays to love it pays to share it pays to give you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you next week when I will finish reading chapter 10. Before I leave, I want to let you know that I newly published a new children's book and in the next two weeks, I have a program. I'm going to share with you what the book is all about. I will also share some reviews about the book. It's my first series. I have Let's Go Shopping. And now I have Let's Go to the Party. I'm going to share reviews of Let's Go Shopping with you. And I'm going to link it with Let's Go to the Party. And I hope you and your children will like my new books. And I also want you to understand that I do not just come up to this channel to just introduce my books to you. That's not the only thing I do. I want to educate people. You know, I want us to learn together. Let's pick out some of the things from the book and learn from it. I make educational books so that children can learn from it. I am a teacher. I'm an educator for both adults and children. So I always want my books to touch people, to teach people. And I believe you like them. That's why I'm always looking forward to your comments, your likes, and all of that. I want to know what you feel about it. And I want you to know that reviews have really helped me. You know, when I see something that needs to be fixed, I go back and fix it. Reviews are really, really lifesavers for me. When I see that you are appreciating what is in the book, I love it. It is a book. It is education. It is educating myself and yourself. Thank you so much for watching. And this note, I want to sign out. And I will say I will see you again next week. Bye.